Please stand for our call to worship. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Let us worship God. our sins and trusting in the mercy of God. Please join me in our unison prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not been faithful children. We have not lived by your law. We have remained silent in the face of evil. We have not refrained from deceit. We have not followed in the way of peace and we have not honored all that is true and good. We have been foolish and immature people who resist the holy wisdom you graciously offer. Forgive us our sin, O God, and lead us to sincere repentance through Jesus Christ. Amen. Was in the beginning. 
the good news. Christ offers himself as bread of life to all who would receive him. This proves his love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Let us pass the peace of Christ.
has given us the bread of life. With joyful hearts, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. When I fear my faith will fail, Christ will hold me fast. When the tempter will prevail, He will hold me fast. I could never keep my hold through life's fearful path, for my love is often cold, he must hold me fast, he will hold me fast, he will hold me fast, for my Savior loves me so.
God the fruits of our labor, and with these gifts accept the offering of our lives. Unite us with Christ, that we may share in his ministry and glorify you. Amen. Please be seated. As we open the word of the Lord together this morning, let us pray God's blessing upon the word. Almighty God, through the reading of Holy Scripture, feed us with your living word and reveal to us the way of everlasting life. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from Psalm 34, verses 9 through 14. Hear now the word of the Lord. O oh, fear the Lord, you, his holy ones. For those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days? to enjoy good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Scripture and message today are a continuation of what we looked at last week in the first eight verses of Psalm 34. As you may remember, this psalm was written by David as he was fleeing from Saul. And David wrote this psalm in thanksgiving to God after being delivered from his fear. In his deliverance, David pens these words of praise. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Now we concluded that God is inviting us to sit at his table. God desires that we release our fears, set aside our worries, and be seated at God's table in safety. The bounty of God's love is endless. In verse 9 of Psalm 34, David turns to the people and begins to teach them. It's much, it, it, come, it becomes more like a proverb at this point. He continues in verse 9 by introducing a different kind of fear. And this is ironic that this is a psalm of deliverance from fear, and now David begins to teach us about the fear of the Lord. 
O fear the Lord, you his holy ones. For those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. This is the true bounty of God's table. When we are seated with God and place our trust in God, we lack for nothing. Now, the times we are living in today are perhaps the greatest opportunity in our lifetimes that we have had to place our trust in God. We toil and we struggle and we banter back and forth looking for answers. But as I have said in recent messages, even those who are very, very educated do not have the solutions we are looking for. Our scripture says that we should fear the Lord and we will have no want. We should seek the Lord and we will lack no good thing. Now the Apostle Paul, when threatened by evildoers, wrote these words. This one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Now this is, of course, it's sports terminology. We're pressing on toward the goal. Now we are all inspired by the Olympic athletes that we've been observing. They are working so diligently toward their goals under less than ideal circumstances. Athletes like 17-year-old Lydia Jacoby, who was the first American woman to win a gold medal in the swimming events in Tokyo. This young high school student dominated the women's 100 meter breaststroke, completing it in one minute, 4.95 seconds. She was the first Alaskan to ever make the US swim team and she earned gold. Her town was elated. It was a marvelous accomplishment, 17 years old. And of course, there's been much conversation about Simone Biles in the news. Simone withdrew from the team's finals and the women's all-around event to focus on her mental health. Now, regardless of your opinion about this situation, here's what I believe. This young woman is helping to teach us all an important lesson. It is okay to step away when you need to, even in times when your entire future seems like it will be impacted. It is okay to lean on the help of others. It is okay to ask others to help and to step up whenever it's needed. We are all so driven. We are so driven by success, the desire to succeed, that we often do so at the expense of our own health. We limit the opportunities of others by not stepping back when we should. Because Simone stepped back, others had the opportunity to shine. It's a team, folks. It's a team and it's okay. If you can't handle it, step back, let others step up. The Apostle Paul did not press on in his own strength and neither should we. In all that we do as God's people and as God's church, we should first depend upon God. And then we should depend upon one another. Notions of self-sufficiency should be set aside. 
We are working together as God's people to achieve whatever God places before us. Again, we are a team as the people of God. The lesson that remains in our scripture is both simple and extraordinary. David says, Come, children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? <coughs> the entire class raises their hand. I do. Yes, I do. I mean, who doesn't want that? We desire life, long days, and we want our days to be filled with good, with fun, with bounty, with love, with all the joys that we want out of life. If you desire life and many days to enjoy good, then do these things, David says. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. <laughs> Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Now this all sounds so simple. It sounds like exactly what our parents or our teachers or those we look up to, people in the church, they've taught us these things since birth. But you know, if we would actually practice these principles, it would change everything. You see, we often think that we are practicing these things, but what about the water cooler talk? For instance, I would never say this to so-and-so, but I think he is a such-and-such. -such. I am so much better. I deserve the accolades. I deserve the promotion. Did you see what so-and-so did? She must be so embarrassed. I can't believe how ridiculous she looked. We say, look at so-and-so over there. Wow, he sure has put on a few. He needs to start watching his weight. All the while, while we are munching on a cheeseburger, and fries. We all do this, whether we consciously know it or not. We speak deceitful things about others. And uh, we all do this thing one time or another, even if our words never get to the person that we are talking about, we are still hurting them and we are also hurting ourselves. Every time that we speak ill of another person, we sink to a lower level of integrity. We're harming ourselves when we speak deceitful things. This is why it is so important that we continually maintain our relationship with God our speech and our actions must flow from a close relationship with the Father. If our spiritual life is on the right path, then the Holy Spirit will guide our speech. The Holy Spirit will guide our actions. We will seek to pursue peace, and God will be glorified in all things. Jesus taught us to pray, Thy will be done, not my will be done. I would encourage you, if you don't already do this, I would encourage you to intentionally seek to begin and end your day with God. Begin your day with a simple prayer such as, Thank you, God, for another day May thy will be done. This is a great way to start. At the end of the day, thank God for helping you throughout the day and pray for some of your friends 
and family who happen to be on your heart that day. These actions help to set our priority on being present with God. To be present with God throughout our day and less centered on ourselves. So I want to just mention it again. It's very simple, but just begin your day with God, maybe even before you get out of bed. Just that simple prayer. Thank you, God, for another day. Thy will be done. And before you hit the hay, or when you hit the hay, say another prayer. Keep God in your life as you begin your day and end your day. The mission of our church is to seek that God be glorified in all things. All glory to God. So let's make it a priority in our thoughts, in our speech, and in our actions that we never seek to harm others. Let us seek peace and pursue harmony as we do the good work that God has set before us. When we need help, let us ask for help and even step out of the way when it's appropriate. There's nothing more harmful to our faith than people who claim to follow Christ but continually speak lies and deceit. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Another way to say this is zip your lip before you sink the ship. <laughs> Remember that one. Because words that harm, they do exactly that. Whatever your ship has, happens to be, your work, your family, your church, deceitful words will sink the ship. There are a few things that are more harmful than evil and deceitful speech. This scripture beckons us to depart from evil and to do good, to seek peace, to constantly pursue peace, not only for the sake of others, but the sake for our own sake. May it be so with us. Amen. Please stand as we sing hymn 83, Be Thou My Vision.
let us affirm our faith by reading together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Dear God, let us heed this simple message this morning to keep our tongues from evil. Lord, help our actions and our thoughts and our speech always glorify you and lift you up. Let our speech and actions lift up those around us. Be encouraging. Let us speak words of peace as we go about our day. Help us, God, to begin and end our day with you and focus our lives upon what you would have us to do each day. God, we pray for all those who need your love and your peace to surround them this morning, those who are hurting today. Lord, I lift up uh, Lauren and Dylan Norby and the loss of Dylan's grandfather. Pray that you'll surround them with your peace this morning. And God, as we collect all of our cares and our worries together, let us lift our prayer using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, church, go forth to love and serve. We go in Jesus' name. The blessing of God, source of life, the grace of Christ, bread of life, and the communion of the Spirit, the power of life, be with you all. Amen.